When your lawn equipment stops working, a tragedy becomes an emergency. That's why you need Mower Alert. It's as easy as pressing a button and you will summon help. Help me, Mower Alert. Hurry, send somebody. I need to cut this grass now. Don't worry, sir. Help is on the way. I'm here to help. What's the problem? Thanks, Mower Alert. With this revolutionary new device, you can virtually get help anywhere, anytime, with Mower Alert. A piece of lawn equipment breaks down every 11 seconds, requiring immediate attention. That's why you need Mower Alert. My mower won't start, and I need to cut my grass. Help, Mower Alert. Don't worry, ma'am. I dispatched a mechanic, and he's on his way. Get off! Get on another one! Where? Alright! I'm here! Thanks, Mower Alert! No matter where you live or how serious the emergency, Mower Alert's got you covered. Help me! Help! Well, thank God you're here! What's wrong with the mower, sir? Nothing! I've fallen and I can't get up! I'm gonna need medical assistance! Uh, well, I'm not a doctor. I'm a lawnmower mechanic, so legally I can't help you. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to charge you for this service call. But I need urgent medical assistance! What are you doing? Don't get caught with your pants down. Get more alert today! Pterodactyl here! Today I'm gonna show you how to replace the coil on this here Tecumish six horsepower engine that happens to be on this here Craftsman Rototiller or Garden Scratcher as I like to call it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is verify you've got no sparks. And you do that with a good spark tester. You wanna put a good spark tester in there and verify the second thing you're going to want to do is find the kill wire and pull the kill wire off to make sure your problem isn't the kill wire. Because a lot of times people will go to, oh look at that air filter, that's nasty. A lot of times people will go to change a coil and then they, I still got no spark. And then they find out, well your, your kill wire was the problem. So let's find the kill wire, which is back here, which is in the back. So I have to get me a pair of pliers and we're gonna disconnect that kill wire. I'm gonna remove this air box assembly just so it's a little easier to get to and that you may also want to do that so it's easier for you. Remove those Phillips head screws. Quarter inch socket over here. Plus if it is the coil, we're still gonna have to remove this anyway. So now you can see where the kill wire is. It's back here. It's plugged into this, so you just take some pliers and pull it out. We don't want this to touch ground anywhere. And we're gonna put our spark tester back on just to verify that wasn't the problem. Make sure you got a good ground. And we'll give it a pull. Still no spark. So it's a coil. So in the front here, there's a bracket under this gas tank that we have to remove. This bracket right here. There's a couple of 3/8 headed screws under here. 
and one here. So we're going to have to remove these through these three bolts and take this plate off. All right, now we got that that bracket off. Now we also need to remove these two 3/8 socket headed screws and get this gas tank bracket off also. So we're going to need to remove the dipstick too. So you got to pop off this little support, dipstick support, and then get a rag and try to clean around here as best you can. So no dirt or debris falls in there when we take this out, depending on how dirty yours is. And then this just unscrews from the block. We want to get that out of our way. Ooh, look at that oil, it's nasty. That's gonna to have to be changed. Now we can just slide the tank back this way. It's on a tab, there's a little tab. There we go. So maybe the cameraman can show you. This tab here slides into the cover. So now we got it loose. The only thing holding it is the gas line. So we can just move it out of the way. Now we can remove this cover to get to the coil. If yours has a throttle cable, you're gonna have to remove that. Quarter inch headed screw, get a quarter inch socket. And then we got another quarter inch screw right here holding this heat shield or attached. Attached to the heat shield, we want to take that screw out. Then 3 8 headed bolts again, a lot of, a lot of 3 8 bolts. There's one there, there's one here in the front, down here, and there should be one over here, yeah, in the front, like the other side. And we've already disconnected our kill wire. So now we should just be able to pull this cover off. And then here's all our throttle linkage and everything is all hooked to this too. So be aware of where this stuff hooks up to. So ours is in the one, two, three, it's in the fourth hole from the bottom. But I think it'd be easier just to disconnect it from here. Just, just turn sideways and disconnect that. And then see how that's hooked in there. And get the flashlight so y'all can see. See how it's hooked in there? at your governor's spring. With your needle nose pliers, carefully disconnect that. There we go. It ain't gonna hurt it if you bend it a little bit. Another way you could take it off if you want is undo these quarter inch screws and just lay this all with it. So there, now we're at the coil. Look, somebody been in there making a house. One of Fluffy's relatives. And then of course you're gonna to wanna to inspect everything while you're in here, like this breather hose. I notice these things crack and break all the time. So you may wanna go on the inner screen and look up a new one. And then here's our coil. 
We're gonna disconnect our kill tab from the back. And again, quarter inch headed screws. We're gonna unbolt our coil. And then always make sure this is good and clean. It's not rusty, you want good contact. That coil's got a ground good against here. So if this is dirty or corroded, get a piece of sandpaper and clean that up. Now what I do? Oh, here it is. Here's the new coil. Part number three, four, 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 three, D. And if you're a poker player, that's that's a full house right there. Three of a kind, two of a kind. Just remember that full house, like the TV show. Remember that full house. All right, get your screws. Now if you notice, the new coil looks a lot different than the old one. It's a lot smaller. So get them started and then pull it up in the slots because it's slotted. Pull it up as far as you can go and just snug them down. Then you're going to want to line up your magnets. Now they say it's not important if the magnets are rusty, but you know, it doesn't hurt to clean them up. Plus, depending on how rusty they are, you know, that rust buildup is going to give you a different kind of air gap reading. So get a piece of sandpaper and clean them up a little bit if you want. We got our magnets all cleaned up. We sanded them nice and clean. Now we're going to set our air gap. And I have the actual Tecumish air gap gauge, seven and a half thousands. But the problem with this flimsy gauge is look, when we go to line the magnets up with the laminates on the coil, you know, the magnets don't reach to the edge. There's no support here, you know, like on some other flywheels that are solid and the magnets are impregnated into the, into the flywheel. So chances are if we try to use this, the legs are gonna hit. So that's why you need like a metal feeler gauge. And I'm gonna use 10 thousandths. I'm not gonna use seven and a half. It's not that critical. And that metal will kind of help give us some support. So now loosen your screws and let the magnet suck the coil against the feeler gauge and then tighten your screws back up. Now they're just little like 1032 or 832 screws so you don't want to go crazy, you could snap the heads off. And spin the flywheel and then check it to make sure it's not hitting. You don't hear it, you don't hear the laminates rubbing on the magnets as they go by. So yeah, that's good. We don't hear none. And now we can hook our kill wire back up on the back here. And then we gotta route it, route it back through here. So we don't want it to get caught on anything. Plus when we go to put the cover back on. Now I got this hose, cause you're probably wondering, I wish he would tell me the part number to that hose. Three six six seven five A is that crankcase breather hose. I'll just use gas line, Terrell. You can't use gas line. It's not the same size. This is come some kind of thin hose. You could try to use gas line, but I don't think it'll work too good. It might be too fat. Or maybe it'll work. Maybe you'll hit me up and go, I use gas line turtle, it'll work. All right, so now we can put our cover back on. We gotta hook in this 
that I kind of bent up taking it out. Our governor's spring. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna take this off, it'll be easier. All right, I bent that when I took it off. So you got your spring like this, straight shot. You got this little leg hanging down. So now we got this. So you're gonna wanna turn this like this, hook it in there, spin it around, and then we got this hanging there. So we want that to go on there like so. And then when we flip it all back up again, see, that's hanging there and that's there. See how that is? This is probably the most important part. Now, we can go ahead and take a pair of needle nose if you have to. And this slides right in there. You're gonna have to push it in. And then we can just let that hang off to the side like that. And we'll go ahead and put the blower cover back on. So when you put this cover on, you gotta make sure you get, get it over all this metal shrouding. A little tricky. All right, and then, you know, make sure you, you shouldn't have to force it. Get one of these screws started. And then we can come over here and put those two quarter inch headed screws that we took out. For the throttle control. Here's that other one. That one for this heat shield. Now we can get all our 3-8 cover screws back in. Now we can put our gas tank back on. Alright, now we can take our gas tank, swing it around. Get that little tab started in that cover and then push it on. Now go ahead and, oh, spark plug's loose. Should probably put a new plug in it too while you're at it, unless you already did. It should be an RN4C, if I remember right. RN4C. So I'll go ahead and put a new plug in it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these screws back in. So we'll put our dipstick back in. Careful not to cross thread it, that plastic. Because you can cross thread it. See, it's fighting me. I'm gonna take the dipstick out and just try to get the tube in there. There we go. Had to kind of push this out off to the side a little. Oh, well, still don't want to go in. Somebody might have been in here before and got it buggered up. There we go. All right, so be careful 
It's easy to cross thread that thing. Snap our little clip back on. Then we'll go ahead and install these two screws that went underneath to hold the gas tank to the engine block. Just get the one started. Don't tighten it down. So that way you can get the other one lined up. It's a little tricky because we got this in the way. If your engine's on, you have one of these engines on something else, you might not have that. I don't want to take a chance of cross threading it. Plus the fuel line's right there. Because I don't have a straight shot with this. All right. Now we can install this plate. Put this one screw in just to hold it for me. And then these are those plastic threaded screws for threading in the plastic. And they go into the plastic tank. Get them started by hand with your fingers. Go ahead, tighten all this up. I'm get my ratchet to get up underneath there to get these two tight. So we're only threading in the plastic, so be careful. You know, these don't have to be real tight. You don't want to strip them out. Especially if you're using these battery powered tools. Okay, so let's put a plug in it and see if it'll start. Well, we'll check it for spark too. Oh, better hook up the throttle cable because this might be in the stop position. So we'll hook that up. I'll put the lever and stop up here where all the bird poop is. Push down on the cable. Make sure we're contacting that little wire there. Tighten that up. And now I'll move it off of that. Now we can check the spark. So I got my spark tester hooked up. I got the plug out so it's easier to pull. Ready? Fingers crossed. Woo! 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 We got spark. Coil was bad. Happens on those. So I got the new plug, the RM4C. I gapped it at 30,000. And I'm gonna take a little never Caesar. Put it on the treads. Make sure you always go a couple threads back. You don't want it to get inside the motor. And knowing this thing, who knows how long it's been sitting with a bad coil. Carburetor's probably gummed up too. Got bird poop, mouse nest in it. Thing is, really been uh, cared for by nature. <laughs> nature took care of it. Well, look at that primer bulb. That thing's hard as a car. It did have gas in it. Probably old gas. Let me see. We get a little shot. Oh, what was that? That fell. Oh, the fuel line clamp broke. No, we ain't getting no primage. Oop, there went the gasket. Well, that ain't stuck. We'll get a little, little help, a little shot of help, just to see if it'll fire up. Starting fluid. Well, 
we got the coil on because that's what this video is how to change the coil on this Tacomas engine and I know what you're saying we want to see it run Carol we want to see you get it running get it running Carol do the carburetor Carol Carol please get it running do the carburetor come on Carol please 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 all right all right quit your begging and whining you want to see me get this thing going keep watching if you wanted to watch this just to know how to put the carburetor or put the coil on, then turn it off. Go watch something else. Go watch Netflix. Alright. I'm gonna pinch off the gas line. And take my half inch wrench. Oh bowl nuts already loose. What's that? Water, water, whoop, 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 whoop. Water alert, water alert, whoop, 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 whoop. Run one on, run on agua. Float stuck. Float stuck. Whoop, 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 whoop. Not stuck anymore. It's on pincher. See what comes out. Water, 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 water. Oh, and a little bit of gas. So Terrell's gonna do a quickie carb job on the tiller. So this is your main jet for those of you that don't know. There's a hole on the side. There's a hole down the center. That's where the fuel comes in under here and goes up through the center. So I gotta clean this, clean the bowl. I'm gonna put a new primer on it. All right, I think I let enough gas through, it stopped. It's gas now, now it's not water. Water is heavier than gas. So the water will come out first. Here's the primer bulb, 36045A. I believe we have a video on rebuilding the, the Cummins carburetor. So here's the primer bulb with that little retainer ring comes with. So we're just going to take a little screwdriver and dig that ring out of there. Come on, little ring guy. There we go. We got it from the top. And then throw that right in the garbage. Now right here, under this little cap, is your low speed jet. See, they hide it, they're tricking you. Let's hide that screw under that cap. And that guy won't know it's there. Because we don't want the guy in there messing with it. So we're going to hide that cap from him. So he doesn't know it's there. So we hid the cap from the guy. And he went and got a big tool because Terrell told him there's a screw under there. And you can actually buy this cap. It's got a part number. But why? Want to hide it again from somebody else? Let's play hide the jet screw. So this is a fixed jet, low speed fixed jet. This isn't an adjustable screw. And then there's a little tiny hole down the center of that and we gotta make sure that's clear. So now we're gonna clean this main jet. Got some carb spray. And a little coffee can. Kind of spray them. If you got a little wire brush, that'll help too. I know they sell sell these little wire brushes. Oh, that one's nasty. Oh, I gotta clean them. At the dollar store, I bought them there before in a set. So if there's any kind of heavy 
crap on there, you can kind of brush it and spray it. Now you're gonna need some kind of wire or whatever to clean it, clean down in there. Q-tip too works good, spray some, just to clean this out. Now you're gonna need some kind of wire and stuff to go down in there. Torch tip cleaners work good for those of you that don't know. A lot of my fans are like, oh yeah, or he's bringing the torch tip cleaners out again. I already know about them torch tip cleaners, Terrell. Well, there's somebody watching this video that doesn't know about torch tip cleaners and I'm telling them right now. So find one that fits in there. Kind of file it a little bit. Make sure it's clear. Make sure this cross hole is clear. And then there's also a little tiny hole here. And there, well my torch tip said I got doesn't have a wire that small to go into there. So if that's the case, go in the house when your wife isn't around and steal the tie off the bread and strip the little coating off because there's a wire in there. But you gotta do this when she ain't around. Because she'll go, what happened to the bread bag tie? Where is it? Who took the bread bag tie? Because that little wire will fit in that hole. You could rod that out. One time I fixed a mower at a guy's house using his tools. And I go, you got bread bag tie? And he went in and took it off there. And his wife found out and she got real mad. And then I had to leave. You know what else works good? We had Terrell fans send us a set of these. You know what these are? Guitar strings. Whole set of guitar strings. Maybe you're a musician. And you're like, oh, dude, oh, wow, I have to get to cut one of the strings for my guitar, fix my lawnmower, man. Same with this guitar string. Find one that fits in there. I'm not a musician, I don't know, I'm a singer. Maybe this is F or G, might fit in there. So you wanna make sure that's clear. The bread bag tie, just a little too big. It wants to go, but you wanna make sure that's clear. Okay, so we got that all taken care of. So you take some carb spray, spray down. The outside of the carburetor. Get some of that nastiness off of there. If you want, you can replace the float. The new float is plastic, just in case your float was heavy and had gas in it. And that part number is 632019A. It fits all them Tecumseh, Tecumish carburetors. It fits them all. I cleaned the float bowl, but you may be sitting there, oh, my float bowl's got holes in it, Carol. I wish you'd give me the part number of the float bowl. So there's the part number of the float bowl. 631867. That's got the small hole. There's another one that's got a bigger hole in it. That's got a different number. And then here's a carb carburetor kit. Needle and seat, bowl gasket, and high speed bowl nut jet gasket. 631021B, as in boy. So, line up the this part with the hinge. And we're gonna stick the bowl nut, main jet bowl nut back on. Tighten it up. Half inch wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and release the clamp. We'll go ahead and put the low speed back in. Now I sprayed a lot of carb spray all over it so it'll probably start. And then now next, last, one stall. 
the primer. Okay, to install the primer, you gotta find a socket that fits in here. You wanna find the right size socket that fits in there for this metal clip. This one's a three quarter socket I'm using. So go ahead and take the primer, stick it in there, put the clip there, put the socket on, and then take a hammer and tap that clip in there. Just tap it. Now, there's a hole that's cross drilled through here. So you gotta have that hole blocked off in order for it to prime. Otherwise you're just pushing air out this hole. So, well I guess I could just put the air cleaner back on. So we'll go ahead and put the air cleaner back on with the gasket. You might wanna clean yours up. And we'll prime it and see if it'll start. Okay, fingers crossed. Prime it. One, two, three. Got it on fast. This is a rotary one, 8330, Tecumseh number 36046. All right, we got her going, we got it working again. So follow me with your garden scratches on Facebook and Instagram. Come on, hurry up. We gotta get that, gotta get that garden in. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our tarot store, buy some tarot apparel, get a spark plug necklace, get a shirt, get a hat, get all kinds of stuff. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Success to come in! Coil replacement and more! Hello, anyone there? Hello, answer me. We got an incoming. Ah, oh, ah, oh, it's slippers again. That's like the tenth time today! Yeah, I'm not even gonna answer it this time. You know what? Just cut off his service. Alright. Probably not even a real emergency anyhow. Service deactivated. What? Service deactivated? But I had a real emergency this time! Ugh! Thanks for nothing, Mobile Alert! Ugh. one.